I'm blind so I can see if the camera is on focus and that's just great! Hi guys and welcome back to my channel, my name is Franny and today we're here to do the Media Freakout book tag. As always, since it's me, I'm late, but we don't care, we'll just ignore that and power through, because that's how we do it. Best book you've read so far in 2020. I had to round it up to three, because I can't choose. Relish by Lucy Nicely. This is a graphic novel memoir, it's mainly focused on food. So of course it had to be one of the best books I've read so far this year. The second one is Little and Lion by Brandy Colbert. This is a YA LGBT themed contemporary that I absolutely adored and I wasn't expecting it. It has a bisexual black main character. And the third one is an LGBT memoir called We Have Always Been Here by Samra Habib. Loved it loved it, loved it. Do yourself a favor, go listen to the audiobook because the author speaks in Urdu and obviously it's always a bonus when that happens. It's always such a treat when you get to hear an author narrating their own life, their own story, and they also get to speak in their own native language, so that's amazing. What's the best sequel you've read in 2020? I haven't read lots of sequels, so I don't have much of a choice. The Hand in the Wall, the third book in the Truly Divi series by Maureen Johnson was just a great ending to the trilogy. I couldn't stop listening to the audiobook, I wanted to know what was happening next. It kept me at the edge of my seat the whole time and it was just a good ending to the trilogy, a great sequel and I really loved it. Actually, now that I think about it, another great sequel was This Coven Won't Break by Isabel Sterling. This was the sequel to one of my favorite books from last year and the funny thing is, I gave this book five stars and I think I gave The Hand in the Wall four stars? But if I had to say what sequel was the best, I would say The Hand in the Wall, maybe because I was more invested in that story because it was a trilogy and not just a duology. I don't know. New release you haven't read yet, but want to. Number one has to be a foolish, a foolish, a beautifully foolish endeavor. A beautifully foolish endeavor. I had green. This is the second book and I think also the last book in the Carl's series duology. I don't know. After having a tiny misadventure? Disadventure? Disadventure. That sounds better. After having a tiny disadventure with the audiobook of this book, I decided to just leave it and read the actual physical book because in the audiobook there are multiple narrators and that just wasn't working for me because I loved the narrator in the first audiobook but that had to change. If you read the book you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, so I can't wait to pick this one up. I think I'm going to start it today. So I'm excited. And another one is You Brought Me the Ocean by um, Alex Sanchez and Judy Maho. And I can't wait to read this graphic novel. I'm so excited. I might have said it in previous videos. If I haven't, this is LGBT. Most anticipated releases for the second half of the year. I don't have many, I'll be honest. Most of the books that I was highly anticipating for this year came out in the first half, so if you're aware of any good books coming out in the second half, no matter the genre, the format, whatever, just tell me, just tell me in the comments because I would love to know. But one book that I did find is Plain Bed Heroines by Emily Dunforth. This is an LGBT gothic comedy set in the 20th century. I think there's a boarding school involved. I think it's kind of paranormal, historical fiction. I don't know. I'm excited. Biggest disappointment. My biggest disappointment of 2020 is King of Crows by Libba Bray. I was highly... the sun is going away. I was highly anticipating this book and then I picked up the audiobook and it was too long and nothing was happening and what was happening wasn't interesting the conclusion was messy it was really a huge disappointment I didn't like it at all Biggest surprise! The biggest surprise was definitely my lesbian experience with loneliness by Kabi Nagata this was a... this is it still is. A graphic memoir illustrated kind of like a manga, but it was absolutely 
amazing. It's not one of my favorite books of the year, but I was really surprised by how the author was so uncensored and brutally honest. And I'm really looking forward to picking up the second volume. Favorite new author, debut or new to you? I'm not sure I can say I have a new favorite author because I think that in order to have a favorite author you have to have read at least a couple of books by them because one is just not enough to say if it's a favorite or not. But a few authors that really caught my attention were Mohsen Amid, Brandy Colbert, and Lucy Nicely. I'm truly looking forward to checking out more books written and or illustrated by these authors. Newest fictional crush. I don't think I can say she was an actual crush, but Dre, Yahira's girlfriend from Club When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Oh, there's also Elizabeth Acevedo. Elizabeth Acevedo is definitely another author that is surprising me and she might become one of my favorite authors because I read With the Fire on High last year and I really liked it and then I read Club When You Land this year and I really really liked it. Oh, that was supposed to be my best books of 2020. This video is just shit. Among my favorite books of 2020, we can put Club When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. Anyway, I was talking about Dre. Yahira is one of the main characters of Club When You Land. We have two point of views and one of the point of views is Yahira's. And Dre was just the sweetest, cutest, most genuine soul ever. I just loved her so much. I wished I could see more of her in the book. But the glimpses that I had were enough to just make me go, Aww! Okay, okay. Newest favorite character. I don't want to say the name because I'm 100% sure I would mispronounce it and I don't want to do that. The main character from The Reluctant Fundamentalist by Musa Namid. I really liked his way of thinking, his way of being honest and open to a stranger and just his whole demeanor. I was just pleasantly impressed by his persona, I guess. A book that made you cry, Club When You Land by Elizabeth Acevedo. I wouldn't go so far as to say that I cried, but it made me extremely emotional. It did make me stop to absorb what was going on in the story. It, it had an impact on me, so we could say that it made me cry. It made me very emotional. A book that made you happy, of course. It's Relish by Lucy Nicely because it was cute, it was about food and it made me happy. <laughs> what is the most beautiful book you've bought so far or received so far in 2020? I don't know if this is the most beautiful book I got this year because I was in Milan and then I moved back home for the summer and in September I'll go back to the north so I don't have all my books with me, I can't remember where I got and where they are but this summer I got You Brought Me the Ocean and I think that this book is just absolutely gorgeous. Love the illustrations, I, I love the style, I just love this. It's a beautiful book. Last but not least, what books do you want to read before the end of the year? So many! So many! <laughs> that is the answer because I didn't read much in the first half for various reasons. So I want to catch up <laughs> in the second half with my Goodreads goal that is not going well. Um, let me just tell you three, because I like the number three. I want to read Gone, A Girl, A Violin, A Life Unstrung. This is a memoir written by a famous violinist, a woman who has lost her precious violin and I think is either trying to find it or talking about her story with this instrument or her growth as a musician and I'm really interested in that. Also because there's an album that you can listen to played by her while you read the book, which is just absolutely amazing. At least to me, it's such a treat. Then I want to read Pizza Girl. It's about a girl who is pregnant and I think she is black or she's a person of color and she's pregnant with the child of a white man and that has some importance in the book. She befriends an older woman who is 
on her own and she has a child and they connect through pizza because this young woman who is pregnant is a pizza delivery woman. I'm, I'm interested, I'm interested by the premise of this book and I've only read positive reviews about this book so I hope it's going to be good. And the last book that I want to mention is In the Dream House by Carmen Maria Machado. This is just the dust jacket because my girlfriend is reading the book and then when she's done it'll be my turn. This is an LGBT memoir. The author Carmen Maria Machado uses the metaphor of a dream house to talk about her own experience in an abusive female-female relationship. That goes to show that even if you're in a gay or LGBT relationship it can be abusive. There's not just physical abuse, there's also emotional, psychological abuse and I'm really interested in seeing what that is like, how the author talks about it and I think it's such an important book that we need. So, this was it for this tag. We're finally done. We reached the end. I'm not going to tag anybody because Meteor Freakout book tags started popping up in my feed in June. So I'm pretty sure that everyone by this point has done it. But if you're like me and you haven't done it yet, definitely do the tag, consider yourself tagged, reply to the questions down below in the comments or just do some of them, whatever you want. Let's just talk about it in the comments because you guys know that I love doing that with you. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I'll see you very soon in another one. Warm hugs!